So Jacob was angry at them for taking the law in their own hands, but they were not guilty of wanton murder because there was a death penalty connected to the sin of not having courts of law. The six commandments God gave to Noah, to, a to Adam and Eve. Not to worship idols, not to be blasphemous, not to murder, not to steal, not to commit sexual sin, and to have courts of law. And a court of law means judges and policemen who teach the other five commandments and enforce their, the obedience of those commandments. Until the flood, which was a thousand years from Adam and Eve, from creation till the flood, there, God had never given permission to eat meat, to eat flesh. So everybody was vegetarian for a thousand years. After the flood, when Noah came out of the ark, and he had been commanded to take two of each animal that was not kosher, but seven of every animal that was kosher. That's because he was going to eat after the flood. So when he came out of the ark, God said to him, you may eat of all the flesh, but don't drink the blood. Now that he had been given permission to eat meat, he was given a seventh commandment, not to be cruel to animals. You can use an animal for food and for nourishment and so on, but you cannot be cruel to the animal. You may not eat a limb that was taken from a living animal. So now we have seven commandments, the seven Noahide laws. Not to believe in idols, not to be blasphemous, not to murder, not to steal, not to commit sexual sin, not to be cruel to animals, and to have courts of law. We read the story of the sons of Jacob when Dina was raped, kidnapped, and her two brothers went into the city of Shechem and wiped out every adult male. And Jacob was angry with them. They lost their temper. They took the law in their own hands, and he criticizes them for it. But for wiping out an entire city, you would think that they would get more than a slap on the wrist, more than just criticism. You'd think they'd be ostracized, excommunicated. They weren't. The, the basis for their decision was that courts of law means that every adult male in a given society is responsible to object to immorality when they see it and to enforce morality when necessary. The fact that their leader had kidnapped and raped the woman and no adult male said anything meant that this was a society without courts of law. So they were violating the seventh commandment of the Noahide laws, and that's punishable by death. Biblical. The problem was that these two brothers took the law in their own hands, but what they did was the law. Nobody empowered them to be the enforcers. So Jacob was angry at them for taking the law in their own hands, but they were not guilty of wanton murder because there was a death penalty connected to the sin of not having courts of law. According to <clears throat> biblical law, according to God, we are not allowed to live in a society that doesn't have a court. We're not allowed to abide by a court that is immoral. We have an obligation to enforce and teach the other six commandments and to believe that any human being who abides by those seven commandments is a perfect human being in God's eye and has a portion in the world to come. Anybody who violates one of those commandments can identify his sin and correct it. Which one of the seven did you fail? Fix it. There's no guesswork. In today's society, 
having heard what you heard yesterday about the growth of sat satanic cults and all sorts of things, where life itself has become meaningless to the average teenager, where you cannot come to a, to a teenager and say, if you smoke that or sniff that or, or, or inject that, you will die and hope that that will discourage them because they are willing to die, because they almost want to die, because teenagers are committing suicide for no apparent reason at all. And there shouldn't be any reason for a teenager to ever commit suicide. Life itself has become dispensable. There's only one response. And that response has to be not something in creation. Creation can be confusing. You can't talk about it's unhealthy, it's not safe. That doesn't work. We're not getting anywhere with that. You can't talk about divine attributes. You can't say, it isn't nice, be kind, uh, be nice to yourself, respect yourself. These things are not working either. There's only one thing left. We have to talk about God's will. What does God want? Why did he create you? Every morning when you get up, God hopes that today you will do what he created you to do. What is that? Seven commandments. You want to become more spiritual. You want to get into the attributes of God. That's fine. But that's your part. What God wants, what God needs, is seven commandments. Follow those seven commandments, and you are fulfilling the purpose for which God created you. You are turning this world into a home for God. That's what he wants. This is concrete. This is getting to the heart of the issue. This is the antidote to I am and who are you. This gets to the heart of total alienation. I don't belong anywhere, so I might as well die. Not true. You are God's creation, and you are in the employ of God. He needs you. That's why he created you. And he needs you not to make you happy. He needs you because he has a need, and you have the privilege and the opportunity to fulfill that need for God. It's a whole different world now. It's a whole different picture. Your mood becomes less important, so that even if you're in a bad mood or not such a good mood, you do what you have to do. Even if you're not inspired and ecstatic with love and fervor for God, you do what He wants, because His will is more important than your will. It becomes a world in which we can live and in which we can all be doing the same thing. Jews were given 613 commandments. We are the priests of the world or the, the holy nation. But what do we do? Whatever it is God needs. Mankind was given seven commandments. Why do we do them? Because that's what God needs. And at this point in history, this is what we need. We need to hear. What was it God said at Sinai? Don't tell me how much you love God. Tell me how much God needs me. Not how much he loves me. How much he needs me. Because if he loves me, it puts the burden on me. If he needs me, the burden is on him. And I'm only here to serve him. So he is really God, not me. And that's a relief. It's difficult being God. So in law enforcement, we're not talking about the good guys against bad guys. We're not talking about the people who believe in laws and the people who don't believe in laws. I was driving a student to the bus station one night, and we were talking about the 613 commandments that govern every aspect of a Jew's life, and how every one of them is of equal importance, and there are no lesser and greater laws, and there are 613 primary laws, and then there are about a thousand customs and traditions to go with it. And just then, a policeman pulls me over. I was driving, and I hadn't come to a full stop. And I rolled down the window, and he says, don't you believe in obeying laws? <laughs> I said, you, you won't believe it.
We have many laws, and it's those laws that give our life meaning. It's not good guys against bad guys. Laws were never given for bad guys. Criminals don't have any laws. Laws are given for good people who want to do the right thing, but need to be told what the right thing is and need to be encouraged or reminded to stay on the right track. So that law enforcement doesn't mean the good guys beating up on bad guys or bad guys outsmarting the good guys. So that when we try to enforce laws, it's not that we're trying to control the behavior of others. We don't take responsibility for good and evil in the world. God created good and evil. What we're doing is obeying a commandment. I'm obeying a commandment to enforce the law. Will you please obey the commandment to not break the law? And we're talking about divine commandments. Stopping at a stop sign, going through a red light. These are auxiliary commandments that are there to protect us so that we are enabled to observe the divine commandments. If we can't get this message through to the young people, if we can't get this through to the legislators, to the people who make the laws, who enforce the laws, then we don't have a healthy society. No matter what kind of medicine or treatment or analysis we're going to go through, we're not going to have a healthy society unless we're healthy at our essence, in our core. And that is, I am here to serve God. Tell me what he wants and I will do it. Thank you for listening after all these hours. Thank you for uh, having these kinds of sessions that uh, help keep the faith alive that people are good and people are doing what God wants and God's plan will be actualized and that with a little more effort, we can make this world a divine place so that Moshiach can come and put the final touches on all of these things that need to be fixed. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below, and see which, which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.